Welcome to module three of the introductory AppSim training. So in this module, we're going to continue on our theme of looking at fallows. Um, and in this particular module, we'll um, investigate nitrogen cycling within the fallow. Um, we'll introduce you to a number of um, new components in AppSim. So the, we're going to introduce you to AppSim managers. Um, we're going to introduce you to array, output arrays, and we'll also um, look at how to bring in a new climate file or meteorological file into a, into a simulation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a new simulation. So click on the new button in the top toolbar. And from our list of example simulations here, select continuous wheat and open it up. First thing we do whenever we start a new simulation is to save it. So click on the save as button and we're going to save this as module three. We'll rename the simulation now. So right click on continuous wheat at the very top of the simulation tree, select rename, and we're gonna call this one nitrogen cycle. Expand out our simulation tree just by clicking the crosses again. Um, and to bring in, so we'll bring in a new meteorological file, we'll actually change locations of where, this, where we're running simulations now. So click on the MET node and then select Browse. Now AppSim, when it installs, will install, um, will come with several example meteorological files and we're gonna use one of them um, for this exercise. So navigate to where AppSim installed. So in my case, installed into my program files folder. Um, select, open up the AppSim folder, um, open up the examples folder and there's a MET files folder there. Open that one up and then select Dolby. Okay, so that we've got our Dolby climate or meteorological record now in, in our simulation. So this record runs from 1988 through to partway through 1990. Um, looking at the raw numbers, it's a bit hard to visualize what's going on. So we can use our um, tabs up the top here, our graph tabs to um, visualize the data. So click on the rainfall chart and we can extend out the number of years that have been displayed. So there's our full um, rainfall record. So it's only a very short climate record, this one. So we can actually fit it um, onto one full graph. We can look at it as monthly rainfall. We can also look at the temperatures over the record and the solar radiation as well. Now we're gonna bring in a soil out back out of our training toolbox. So click on the training toolbox down the bottom that we brought into our user interface back in module one. Um, expand out the soils folder there. Click on the heavy clay while holding down the mouse button, drag it up and place it into the paddock. And we can close off our toolbox. Now we've got two soils in our paddock and where we can only have one. So we need to delete the original soil. So to do that, right click on that soil node and then select delete, and then expand out our heavy clay soil node. Um, now, because we've just brought this, this soil into the simulation, we need to specify what its initial water is and its initial nitrogen status is. So click on the initial water node and change the amount of water in the soil this time to 50% and select evenly distributed. So now we've got 50, the soil is 50% is full with the water evenly distributed down the soil profile. Then click on the initial nitrogen node. Okay, and we've got to enter in our soil depth, our nitrate and ammonia concentration. So to find our soil depth, click back on the water node and take note that the, de the lowest soil depth is 180 centimeters. So we go back to our initial nitrogen node and put in 180 centimeters, okay. Now, we, because the, remember these are highlighted in red, so we can change the units um, that are being, that these are presented in. So we can either have it as parts per million or right click on it and we can select kilograms per hectare. And we're gonna to want to select, we're gonna enter these in as kilograms per hectare. So change both of them to kilograms per hectare. And then specify 19 kilos a hectare of nitrate and zero kilograms a hectare of ammonium. Now, if we expand out our manager folder, you'll see here there's two manager scripts. 
already here. Um, we don't want either one of them in this particular simulation, so just right click on each one and select delete. But make sure you leave the manager folder there present because now what we're going to do is you're going to bring in a new, um, new manager into our manager folder. And so if you open up the management toolbox that's down in the bottom toolbar, this contains pretty much every kind of management action you'd want to undertake within a simulation. Um, and some of, it, some of them are quite complex um, and they're in a number of folders. The one we're looking for for this particular simulation is under the manager common tasks folder not the manager.net common task, but the manager common task folder. So expand out that folder. And we're looking one called, for one called fertilize on fixed state. So once you find that one, click on it, drag it and place it into the manager folder. So we can see it there now. Close off the management toolbox and then back in our simulation tree, click on fertilizer on fixed state. And it brings up an interface here where we can specify fertilizer date, um, the module to actually use to apply the fertilizer, the amount of fertilizer we want to apply, and the fertilizer type. So with regard to dates, now you have to remember AppSim gets very picky about the date format. So make sure you stick to the date format that's specified for this. So it's day, day, month, month, month with a little dash in between. So we want to specify a fertilizer date of the 10th of January. So enter in 10 and then we'll enter in J A N for January. Okay, we need to specify which module to use to apply the fertilizer. Um, this is because we can actually have different multiple modules that could potentially apply fertilizer in our simulation. Um, in our simulation tree, you notice here we've got a fertilizer module, so that's the module that we want. So to select that one, just click on the drop down menu and then select fertilizer. Okay. We could specify the amount of fertilizer that we want to apply. In this case, we want it left at 150 kilos per hectare. And then we can specify the fertilizer type. So if you click on this drop down menu here, you can bring up a whole range, a number of different fertilizers. So we could have urea, um, we could have urea as applied as nitrate or urea total N. So we want urea N for this one. This, is, this means it will apply 150 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare in the form of urea. If we just selected urea, it would mean we'd apply 150 kilos of urea per hectare. So but we, for this simulation, we want it as applied as 100, we want 150 kilos of nitrogen applied. So we're gonna go select urea N. Okay, once we got our uh, um, manager specified, select the, the wheat um, node within the simulation tree, right click on it and delete it. We don't need it anymore. Um, or we don't need it in this simulation because we're running a fallow simulation, not a wheat crop. Um, and the next thing to do is to specify the outputs that we want out of our simulation. So expand out our output node and select variables. And here's, our, here's where the place where we tell apps in what variables we want. Now leave the date in our, um, in our table of outputs here, or our, um, but every, select everything else. So a quick way to do that is to hold down shift and select them all and then press delete. So we're just left, left with the date output. And now we're gonna use the component filter to find the other outputs that we want. That we want. So from the um, filter to the clock component, and we want day, so double click on day, and we also would like year, so double click on year, and that's adding them to our, our list of outputs right here. For, um, from the meteorological component, so our climate file, we would like the rainfall output. So double click on rain. And then from our soil component, so the heavy clay soil component, um, we, there's, we want um, a number of outputs. Now there's a lot of, um, quite a list of outputs we could request from the soil component or the soil, soil module. So we're going to use the search function to find these. So the first one we want is D layer, and that is the depth of each soil layer. Okay, notice it's specified here as an array, so it will actually return a value for each one of our soil depths. We would we also would like the uh, an output called ESW, which stands for extractable soil water. We would like um, nitrate, so NO three. 
So double click on it. And remember, it is given to us as an array. Um, so if we want it summed across our entire soil profile, like we do in this case, we need to put a, put a open parentheses and close parentheses just behind, um, just after it in our, in our list. And then if to change how it's actually reported or the name that's reported to under, we can actually specify that as well. So if we type in as and then space and then have NO3 total listed, that will now give us, instead of it being reported as NO3 open parentheses, close parentheses, it'll be reported as NO3 total for us. We also would like the ammonium or ammonia the same way. So NH4, okay, we want as a total across our soil profile. So open parentheses, close parentheses to be behind it. And then a space and then as, and then we'll go NH4 total. So that will give us, that will report our ammonia um, rather than not as NH4 open parentheses, close parentheses, but report it as um, NH4 total. Okay, we also would like the nitrate and ammonia reported for each soil layer. So back using a search function, just type in NO3 again and double click on NO3. And because this time we're not putting the open parentheses and close parentheses behind it, it will give us the nitrate for each soil layer. And same thing for ammonium, NH4, there we go. Um, now we'd also would like reported for us the denitrification of the soil. So that parameter is called DNIT, so denitrification, right there. And it, notice here it's reported as an array, so it's reported for each soil layer. We just want the total across the soil profile, so put an open parentheses, close parentheses behind it. And the final thing we would like, we'd like the amount of urea put in the soil as well. Remember, because we're applying the fertilizer in the form of urea. So search for urea, double click on it. Again, it's reported as an, it's an array variable. We want the sum across the soil profile, so open parentheses, close parentheses to tell Appsim that we want the total for the soil. That's all our output specified. Now we need to specify a reporting frequency. So click on the report and frequency node. Delete harvesting because there is no crop to harvest in this simulation. And then go to the clock component in the component filter. And we want to report it on at the end of each day. So we're going to get daily output. So collect, double click on end day. So once we've done that, we now need to specify the start and end dates for our simulation. So click back on the clock node. And we can specify, a st we'll want to specify a start date of 1989, um, so 1st of January 1989, and an end date of the 31st of December 1989. So we're going to run a one year simulation. Once we've done that, click save, then hit run. There we go, and our simulation is run. So if we click on the output file or the output node, um, here's our, our outputs, and you can notice here we've got the depth of each layer reported for us. We also have extractable soil water, our um, NO3 reported as NO3 total because we told Appsim that's how we want that's the value or that the header we wanted reported as. And then we can also see here, here's the nitrate reported for each soil layer as well. And same with ammonia. And then we've got our total denitrification and our total urea across the soil profile. So quite a bit of um, data there to, to comprehend and um, to help us visualize or to, to understand it, we're going to graph it out. So under the graphs component or the graphs toolbox um, in the graphs folder, Expand out to graphs and then select and drag the XY plot up into the simulations folder. Now rena rename this graph to, uh, by right clicking on it, select rename and call it nitrogen. Expand 
expand out um, each node until we get to the apps in file reader. Then click browse. Navigate back to where we saved it. So in my case, it was under the app sim training folder I created in my documents. And select nitrogen cycle dot out. Then in the plot node, under for X variables, select day. And then click on Y variables, so that box is pink. And we want a number of variables. We would like urea. So scroll right across the end until we get to urea. We would also like the NO3 total and NH4 total and change the point type to none. And then click on our graphs on our nitrogen node. And you see here a graph here showing our urea that was in our soil. So you can see the spike there with the application of the urea fertilizer, then a, a, a subsequent spike in nitrate, and then, sorry, a subsequent spike in ammonia and then nitrate um, forming as that ammonia depletes. Now the other thing we'd um, like that we're interested in is the amount of denitrification that has occurred and, and when it's occurred. So we're gonna create another graph. So just click on the nitrogen graph node in the simulation tree, drag it up and place it back into the simulations folder to create a copy of it. And then rename this one to denitrification. Expand out till you get to the plot node. And we're gonna delete the urea and the ammonia component, but leave the NO3 total there. Um, and we're gonna add in rain as a component. We want um, ESW, so the extractable soil water added in as a component. And also the total denitrification, which is, if you'll need to scroll right across and select the DNIT output. And we want that denitrification plotted on the right hand axis. So right click on it and select right hand. So select it, right click on it and select right hand axis. And then if we click back on the denitrification graphics element, we can then switch on our additional um, outputs. And we see here we've got um, so our NO3 total is um, increases as after the fertilizer application. Our extractable soil water increases as the fallow continues, just like um, as we would expect. And then we, our denitrification is associated with various rainfall events as well. So you can see, um, you can see here from this graph that the that's um, significant nitrogen is lost. Um, via denitrification when large amounts of nitrate is available in the soil and there is um, and the soil is essentially saturated or when there's plenty of water available in the soil. Okay. The other thing we might want to explore is the movement of nitrogen with through the soil profile. So back in the graphs toolbox, there's a depth graph graph there. So grab it, click on it, hold it down drag it up and place it into the simulations folder. We close off our, our graphics toolbox. Now expand out our um, the nodes under the depth graph right till we get to the AppSim file reader. Click browse, select nitrogen cycle dot out as the file. Okay, and then click on depth. And we want to specify what depths or what um, dates um, we're particularly interested in, in Plotting. So we want in this plot to plot the um, a graph for the 31st of January. So select that um, tick box and also one for the 16th of June. So we'll scroll down to the 16th of June and turn um, check it, it's checkbox as well. Now click on the plot graph for X variables, or so for Y variables, you notice depth is already placed there for us. Make sure you leave it there, and this time we're going to plot our um, nitrate ammonia on the x-axis. So with the x, box, x variables box highlighted in pink, click NO3 and NH4. Okay, And then click back on the depth graph. And see here now we've got our 
NH4 plotted as um, plotted as well as our nitrate. So we'll just turn off the NH4 values for the moment. And you can see here that our um, originally very early on, so just after the fertilizer application, a lot of the nitrate was in the top um, layers of the soil. But as this fallows progressed, so progressed for nearly nearly six months. Um, that nitrate has moved down the soil profile. Now we're starting to see a bulge of nitrate at about 500 millimetres depth. If we turn them off and we can look at the ammonia. So again, we can see here soon after applica or um, relatively soon after the fertiliser application, quite a lot of ammonia um, present, um, ammonium present at, in the top surface layer. But to, um, six months later, there's not much ammonium, ammonia present, ammonium present in the soil at all because it's all um, been converted to nitrate. So that now concludes our uh, module three of the absent training. So just click save um, and we'll see you soon for module four.